and welcome to another Real Life Ghost Stories mini episode. How you do? Did you like that really smooth transition because I can't remember what number it is? Yeah, it was oh, good. It was good, wasn't it? You could just do what I do on uh, 53 Movie Club and just say another episode. Another, um, well, <laughs> there we are. So I've got two gorgeous stories for you today. Are you ready? Yeah, I, I'm never ready for these things because they freak me out, but go for it. The first story is a tiny baby story, as in it's only a short story, it's not... A story about a tiny baby. I mean, a a freaky tiny baby story would be scary. So I'm glad. The first story comes from Sydney. Are you ready? Yep. No. When my grandma moved into the house she lives in now, she found a kitten on the side of the road and took it home. She cared for it and loved it like it was her only child. Even though she already had five kids and a grandchild, me, I grew up with the cat and she became basically my best friend. And when I would sleep over, I would always sleep in the upstairs room, which basically belonged to the cat. When it passed away about four or five years ago, she was absolutely devastated and didn't touch the room that the cat deemed her own. The only person who would go up there was my grandfather and myself, and he didn't have any problems with it. I had a few interesting moments up there. I would be sleeping in the bed And when I would be just falling asleep, my feet would feel a weight at the end of the bed. And since the cat slept with me before she died, I didn't think anything of it. Until that morning when I realised she wasn't there. Mm. Nothing was there. So every night I'd go to bed and it would be the same thing. And on the second to last night, I felt it by my chest and then on my chest, which is what she did when she would want attention from me. I never told my grandma, or she would have told me it didn't happen. But I wanted her to know that her precious baby never left her or me. Mm. Oh, my soul! It's cute. It is cute. I mean, I, I mean, I'd be well freaked out, wouldn't I? Let's oh. be honest. If there was something on the end of my feet and it wasn't there when I looked, I mean, that would not sit well with me at all. But at the same time, that's so gorgeous. It's often really hard. Heartache, losing a pet, losing a pet, isn't it? So a little bit well, of reassuring a, comfort. There was a, an article recently in like the Guardian or something, or maybe it was something I don't remember, but where they talked about sometimes the loss of a pet can actually be more difficult to get over than the loss of a human, and I can see how that might happen. Yeah, yeah. Think, to be honest, it's all about relationship, isn't it? I guess. Yeah, and how close you are, like how because you know some pets are like practical pets, like farm pets and stuff, where. They might not necessarily be like indoor pets, or but they're useful on the farm. And other pets like Bim are like babies, like actual babies. I don't know where she is at the moment. She's not very happy with us recording right now for some reason. <laughs> I don't really know why. So that was Sydney's story and I loved it. Yeah, and it just very, made me so it's, happy. It's, uh, quite a heartwarming little ghostly tale. Yeah, I love it. And I love it because I love when people say, tell us their pets coming back to visit them after they've died because it makes me think oh they have a soul and they've come back to the person that they loved that's very nice are you ready for another story no story number two comes from ember when i was younger maybe five or six my father had a work buddy that owned a ouija board and no longer wanted it in his home he asked my dad if he could leave it at work till he could find someone to take it some time had passed, and nobody seemed to want it. Shocking. Just going <laughs> to pause that. That was shocking that no one would want it. <laughs> I'm not sure the reason why, but my dad brought it home. And I remember him telling me and my older brother not to touch it or play with it. So one day when my dad was out, we obviously decided to get it down and mess around with it. Mind you, we were young and had no idea what it really was or how to use it. So we just pushed the planchette around, and then we put it away. Fast forward some time, and we started to have strange things happen at home. My father and brother, along with a family friend, said that they could hear breathing all through our home, and never could quite figure out where it was coming from. Think if your house could breathe, and you could hear it from every room. But one night in particular, it was really bad. The breathing started and I was asleep. My brother would suffer from sleep paralysis sometimes and it started that night. 
He said it was like someone was pushing down on his chest and every time he exhaled, it was much harder to breathe in. He managed to call out to our dad and he came in and was able to get him up and out of the room and put him into the living room. Then the breathing in the house got louder and when he came to get me from the same room, he said it was like he had hit some kind of wall and he just physically couldn't come in. I was still fast asleep. Apparently I could sleep through doomsday. (laughs) That sounds familiar. (laughs) But he said he saw what looked like shadows on the walls coming closer to where I slept. And he finally got the strength to come into the room and grab me. We all left that night and stayed at a friend's house. And the next day, my dad took the Ouija board back to his co-worker and told him to burn it. Now, that was the most active thing that happened. But it didn't stop there. I've been told by many people that I'm a conduit. Sometimes by people I don't even know. They just saw me in the street and stopped to tell me. There was an apartment that my brother, dad and I lived in for a few years, while I was going through high school. This apartment had some fires back in the day. And there's a belief that somebody actually passed away in the fires. And I had a few things happen in this place. There was a day that two of my friends were over and we were in the kitchen. I was making everyone sandwiches. I was in the middle, my friend Lindsay was to my right and my friend Libby was to my left. This may sound weird, but I like onions in my sandwiches. I love a fully loaded sandwich, like (laughs) Scooby-Doo. I don't mind the onions if they're cooked, but I don't want no raw onions in anywhere. Anyway, while I was cutting the onion, the plastic bag that I got it from started to move across the counter and kept moving until it fell into the sink. When that happened, I felt a cold draft go past me from behind and Lindsay and I looked at each other and both of us had a what the fuck look on our faces. My friend Libby looked pale and stared at my fridge with a look of fright on her face. I asked her what was wrong and she tells us that she saw a boy walk into the kitchen and disappear through the fridge. That freaked me out. I thought maybe the AC vent had turned on and that's why the bag moved across my counter about three feet. But we didn't have a vent facing into the kitchen. It was facing into the dining room where the ceiling was about a foot taller than the kitchen. You know those glade candles they used to sell that were round in shape? Well, my dad was obsessed with those and we had a few of them on top of our bookshelves. Twice, those things flew at my head and almost hit me. One time, my friend Lindsay was over, same friend as before, and she was sitting on the sofa that faced the front door. I was putting something back behind the bookshelf by the front door and as I ducked down to do so I heard something very heavy smash into the front door where my head had been not five seconds before. I look up real fast and stare at Lindsay. I was mad because I thought she had thrown something at me. But she was scared and her eyes were wide. I looked down and it was one of those candles. I picked it up and asked her if she had thrown it and I realised this one was on the bookshelf I was standing next to. It was gone and it had somehow projected itself at me. If I had knocked it off, it would have fallen to the floor. It wouldn't have flown at my head like someone threw it across the room. We moved out of that apartment a year or so after that because a fire had started downstairs. No, another fire starting going. Right? I was just thinking. Why has this suddenly become a thing? Why am I only finding this out now? Like That ghost can start fires. How oh There's so much there's so many issues with that. Like Oh <laughs> You don't know where to start, do you? No, like if a ghost can start a fire, that means ghosts can kill you. Yeah. So have people that died in fires previously been killed by ghosts? Probably not all people who died in fires previously. I mean, that's a bit of a stretch, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and probably the Great Fire of London would be the the prototype for ghost fires if all fires were start, started by ghosts. That is true, actually. Or somebody, or it got really out of hand and, and a ghost was like, oh shit, <laughs> I did not mean to do that. I wonder if this place, this that house that the fire started, the ghost had graduated from Sally House fire starting class. Yeah, maybe. Sounds like they did. Yeah. Because there's no suggestion really that Ember and her family believed 
that the fire was being started by, or the fires were started by a ghost. Maybe it was a Sally House ghost. Also, those Glade candles, right, being a candle expert. Yeah. They're pretty chunky, right? Oh, yeah, they are. So you don't really want them being launched to your head by that humans. Could kill you. Let alone. Like one of those Glade candles could definitely kill you. Yeah, so this 100%. is a. 100%. And why did he go into the fridge? Why did the ghost walk into the fridge? Well, presumably he wasn't going to get a snack. Maybe he was. Or more onions. Oh, yeah. Potentially, that was where a door used to be. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't think he was going into the fridge to get something. I just thought he's like, that's just how he exits. Maybe that's the portal. Maybe the fridge is the portal. (laughs) That's how he exits a room, through the fridge. (laughs) And enters. Uh, Yeah, okay. Oh, that's weird. I don't... mm -hmm. I can't have ghosts starting fires. So I'm choosing... Is it too much for you? I'm choosing not to believe this. Hmm. Not the story. I believe the story. I believe there's a ghost that throws things, but I just, You're just I'm just choosing not to accept the fire. Choosing not to accept the fire part of it. Just is that all right? Can not. I do that? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. You can choose not to believe whatever yeah. you want to not believe. All right, it's fine. Okay. But if you enjoyed our stories this week, <laughs> you can find us on Instagram. I'm on Instagram at Real Life Ghost Stories. Dan is on Instagram at Fifty P Movie Club. We're on Twitter. At Real Ghost Pod. You can send us your stories to real life ghost stories podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook, Real Life Ghost Stories Podcast. Give the page a like, leave us a little review. You can also join our super group, which is or L G S Super Group. And finally, you can support us on Patreon and you can support artists in this terrible time by buying their merch, which all the links for that stuff is in the description. There you go. That was quick, wasn't it? It was very quick. Quick and easy. I mean, that was the... Seems like a very quick episode, but that's good. Yeah, it's only a short one. Yeah. We'll see you soon, I guess. And we shall see you next week. Bye.